Is Lamar Jackson the Michael Jordan of the NFL? Why Ravens fans really need to appreciate John Harbaugh a lot more than they do? Which positions on offense and defense do you have the most confidence and the least confidence in? These questions and more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Aang Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, uh, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subscribers, then send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to the team, keep it clean patrons. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to my guy Sean who sent this football like I think maybe like two years ago for Carter. And sometimes we be st we still be playing catch with it too. I just put Aaron in just now. But anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my boy William J. He said, "Now I know Lamar Jackson has a lot more to accomplish in order to earn the title, but is it safe to say that Lamar Jackson is the Michael Jordan of the NFL, considering the ceiling Lamar projects and his game-changing resume that's already been established?" I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on this. Thanks for all that you do and the consistent content. Uh, you and the array of YouTubers really get me through the off season in good spirits. Thanks again, and God bless you and your family. Appreciate that, William. And yeah, that, like you said, we got through the off season. We got through it. It's pretty much done now. We're here. Uh, but anyway, is Lamar Jackson, is it safe to say that he's the Lamar Jackson? I mean, he's, of course, he's the Lamar Jackson. Is it safe to say that he's the Michael Jordan of the NFL? No, not at all. Not at all. Not even close. And that's not a shot of Lamar at all, but Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan got, what, six titles, six championships? So, no, Lamar Jackson, he hasn't got his first championship yet. So he, he cannot be the Michael Jordan of the NFL. Right now, the Michael Jordan of the NFL, that goes to Brady. That goes to Brady. Now, Brady did a little different than Michael Jordan did. Because remember when Jordan went to the Wizards? A lot of people was thinking, oh, I remember I had, my, uh, I had a Jordan Wizards jersey. The, um, the one with the stripes. Not the regular Wizards jersey because those are ugly. I had the one with the, uh, the, the Bullets jersey. The Bullets jersey. Oh, man, I, that was probably one of my favorite jerseys ever, man. Um, but, boy... Boy, I, mean, I, I used to love getting jerseys. And I guess it translated because, you know, anyway. Um, but, yeah, he, he went to the, he went to the uh, Wizards and it wasn't looking so good. But Brady, he left and he, he didn't retire for a while, but he left and went to the Bucks and they did their thing. Uh, but, yeah, Lamar Jackson is definitely not the um, Michael Jordan uh, of the NFL. Hopefully this year he can establish himself as the Giannis Antetokounmpo. And uh, I know some people that just, look, real quick, you don't have to be so technical. I see some people in the comments section, oh, you can't compare the two. Oh, one's NBA and one's NFL. Oh, they play two different sports. One's a basketball player, one's a football player. Relax, please. Please. Nobody is saying they are identical. Nobody is saying they play the same sport. Relax, please. Sometimes when I see that stuff, I'm like, wow. Do we have? Do we wake up just being technical? If, if something isn't exactly what it should be, then I'm going to go crazy over it. Relax. But anyway, <laughs> it got me out of character. Um, but they, with Lamar Jackson, yeah, hopefully this can be the year where he takes on that Giannis role. To where, again... We talked about it, overly criticized, people hating for one way or another. The guy just walks around being all humble and stuff, being all nice to people. And he's very different than the norm. He's different. Plays the game differently. Goes about things differently. But at the same time, while he's different, he's never disrespectful. Never disrespectful. Not a disrespectful different. Super respectful. So, but no, nah, he is not the Jordan of the NFL. Next question came from my boy Cam Wee. Shout out to my guy, man. He said, uh, what's going on, good brother? Haven't sent you anything in a while. Just been watching and supporting. Appreciate that, man. Uh, but this one is not a question. It's more like me venting to our fellow Ravens fans that keep trying to push Coach Hobbs out the door. Oh, he watched that most recent episode of Question from Subscribers, and the question came from a guy in the room. I remember that one. But anyway, number one coach, Hobbs is one of the top winning coaches in the NFL. It's true. That's true. He said, number two, Coach Hobbs has only one losing season, year 2015, the year that everyone got hurt. Technically, that is true. Technically. If we're going by records, 
Losing season, yes. They went 5-11 and 11 that year. Yes, that is true. But it, it, it all depends on how you look at losing season. If you look at losing season by just the record and that's it, no more, no less. Okay, he's only got one of them. But if you go to 2013, that was not a winning season. And in football, in sports, in competition, in whatever, you have winners and you have losers. You don't have tires. You have a winner and you have a loser. The winners, they make playoffs. The losers, they don't. Well, in the case of, uh, I think there was one year where some teams went 9-7 and seven and somebody didn't make the playoffs. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. But 2013, what, they went 8-8. Eight and eight. It wasn't a losing season, but it was a losing season. Yeah, they were coming out of the Super Bowl, though, so we were still on that Super Bowl high. We were like, oh, yeah, we were Super Bowl champions last year. Oh, we good. We could miss out one time. 2014, they got back to winning. 2015, again, scratch that. They, you get a pass because everybody got hurt. But 2016, playoffs, no. 2017, playoffs, no. And again, they didn't have a losing record, but they were losers. They were lo and, and even though they came close to making to the playoffs, they were losers. They didn't get in. And then 2018 was trending in that direction. It was trending in that direction. But then Lamar Jackson, you know, you know the rest of the story. Anyway, let's keep going. Number three, uh, Harv's just won Coach of the Year in 2019. How quickly we forget about that. Well, I ain't forget about it. I remember the Ravens got all them awards in 2019. Boy, they got everything <sighs> except the Super Bowl. Anyway, number four, look at how many coaches that have gotten head coaching jobs under coach since he's been there compared to who's been fired. That tells you that he's a leader of men, and that's why we've had different coordinators. Five out of eight, my brother. Four were successful as head coach. One of four won a Super Bowl, and one is to be determined, that being David Culley. Uh, two offensive coordinators fired and one replaced. Marty didn't want to step down uh, d to the passing game specialist, so he retired. No, that, that was him getting fired. That was a nice way of Harbs not wanting to mess up his resume and be like, look, man, we, we got to let you go. But look, 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 let's let me let them know. I'm, uh, this is what we're going to say. Just just say you declined this position. Let me just make up some let me, ah, passing game specialist. OK, just we're going to we're going to make this position for you. But just say just say you declined it. Say you're going to step down. So this thing ain't got to look ugly because I, I still want you to get opportunities. I, I don't want it to look like you got fired. I got you, though. And, and again, hashtag hood hardball. How about be taking care of his people, whether he bringing you in and putting you on, which he does a lot of, or he putting you out. He still takes care of you either way. So shout out, shout out to John Harbaugh, man. Harbaugh, one of the boys, man. Anyway, um, <laughs> he said, so that's a 62.5% uh, of the coaches that have left that were successful. Uh, Rex Ryan, oh, you know, Rex, well, he wanted to be the head coach. He wasn't feeling horrible like that. Anyway, uh, Rex Ryan, Chuck Pagano, who was another defensive coordinator. Uh, Caldwell, Gary Kubiak. Now, Gary Kubiak, yeah, he was an offensive coordinator for one year. I can't, yes, he did go on to be the Broncos head coach. And, yes, the previous year he was Ravens offensive coordinator. Did Harbaugh really put him, because he had a resume before that. He had a resume before that as a head coach. He was head coach of the Texans, I believe, did his thing there. Um, but, yeah, he did do the show. Hey, he said, hey, I'm an offensive coordinator of these Ravens. He said, if I can get these Ravens to have an offense, then I got to be something serious. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, man. Um, oh, and he put in parentheses under Gary Kubiak, Joe Flacco's best season. Number five. Coach Harv stood on the table to get our boy Lamar Jackson. Enough said. Coach Harv stood on the table to try to save himself, too, man. Like, yeah, he might have stood on the table to get Lamar Jackson, but he was like, look, man, this thing ain't been going so good. I'm about to be up out of here. So I, I got to go I gotta go against the grain. I got to do something way different than what I've been doing because, whoo, boy, oh, them cheeks were getting sweaty. They were getting sweaty. Anyway. They say sorry for the long rant, but again, we better appreciate what we have and stop acting like we are losing culture.
The rings are coming, people. P.S. Bro, I'm going to DM you a few workouts because I want to make sure you and the wife are take, taking care of yourselves. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a little slick way of saying engraving. You fat, man. Engraving, you, 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 you pudgy, man. I'm looking at the videos and seeing your cheeks on the camera. They, 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 they starting to bulge, man. But nah, it's all good, man. I appreciate it. You say love y'all, man. In the words of Kendrick Lamar, we're going to be all right. LOL. Now, I appreciate that. This, this, this was a lot of fun, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody got their, uh, different people got their different feelings about, um, about Coach Harbaugh, man. Uh, and I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion on how you feel about Coach Harbaugh. His, his resume definitely, um, it's a great resume. We've got a lot more wins than losses, a lot of playoffs and success and whatnot. Uh, so how about been doing this thing? Um, could he improve in some areas? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, but every, every single coach has where uh, they're strong at, things that they're great at, and then every single coach has things that they don't do so well uh, as well. So um, hopefully this will be a year where he can be like, he, he, he will give every single Ravens fan reason to believe that, hey, we got this and... I'm going to still be here for the long haul, and I got y'all. Trust me. We want to have big trust in John Harbaugh. Um, so we'll see how this year goes, especially come playoff time. Next question came from my guy, Bullet HX. He said, hey, Graven, love watching the videos. Appreciate it, man. Uh, which positions on offense and defense do you have the most confidence and the least confidence in for this upcoming season? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, positions on offense with the most confidence? Um, I would say the, the running backs. The running backs because we know under greg roman that running game is is something serious and and that is what he specializes in that is his bread and butter um so i the running backs for sure because i i know that they're gonna get good opportunities too um now position with the least confidence in did he say offense and defense oh yeah he did say offense and defense uh position with the least confidence and on offense oh well it ain't that many positions um Wow. I would say fullback. And the reason I say fullback is because I think that Patrick Ricard, I don't think he's going to do bad at all. Um, but I think that his opportunity will start being more and more limited. Uh, with them having a third tight end this year, which I expect, I think they expect as well. Uh, with them adding even more receivers this year, with them having a plethora of wide receivers uh, in their arsenal, um, with them expected to really up the passing game, I think that will diminish Patrick Ricard's role a bit um, on offense. So we'll see. Now on defense, the position uh, that I feel I have the most confidence in, uh, would be the cornerbacks, uh, Humphrey, Peters, Smith, Taylor. I mean, we ain't got to go through all the cornerbacks, but it would definitely be the cornerbacks. Position where I have the least amount of confidence in, um, I would say either, ah, uh, I would probably say pass rush. And only because it's just a lot of unknown. I'm not saying I, f I feel like they're going to do bad because I just you just we just don't know. It's so much unknown at the pass rush. So that would be the one that I would have to have the least confidence in. The next question also came from my guy, Bullet Atrix. He said, uh, PFF ranked the Ravens front office as number one in the league in front of the Bills, the Patriots, the Browns and the Bucks. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, the Bills, over these past couple years, oh, yeah, they, these past two years, like, I mean, moving forward, going into 2021, and then last year, them rosters were, them rosters were nice, man, even the year before that, too. Uh, the Patriots, um, besides last year, uh, but in the years prior, they, they have certainly been doing their thing um, consistently. Uh, the, the rosters weren't the prettiest, but they still get the job done. The Browns, over these past three years, they have been building these Madden rosters, these Madden all-star rosters where they got great players here, there, 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 there. And, and then the Bucks, uh, you see what they did last year. Brady came through and they was like, oh, you know what? We're going to really get this roster right. So they did their thing too. Uh, but the Ravens, ahead of all those guys, I think um, it just goes to the Ravens' consistency. Um, my guy and Cam Weeds in his statement earlier, he talked about John Harbaugh and him only having that one losing season in 2015, which again is technically true. Um, but 
with that being said, uh, it it has shown, and, and just even without looking at the, the record, when you watch this Ravens team year in, year out, they are normally, like even in the years where they didn't make the playoffs, they would still be competing and fighting right down to the very end. Right down, it, like Ravens would never, ha would, they, they would never be in a position to where there are two games left and they were out of the playoffs. They wouldn't be there. They were always down in it, right to the, in the thick of it to the very end. So that says a lot about the team. That says a lot about Coach Harbaugh too, but it says a lot about how these rosters are constructed, how the front office does at their job. It says a lot about that. And uh, you got to give a huge uh, commendation to them for that. So that's probably why they rank number one. Speaking of the Ravens front office, the last question on this episode of Question from Subscribers came from my guy BB. He said, what's up? Hey, man, have you noticed since EDC has been running things, he has been consistent in the way the Ravens draft in 2019? Hollywood was the first pick on offense. Sack Daddy was the second pick on defense. 2020, Patrick Queen was the first pick on defense. JK was the second pick on offense. 2021, Bateman was the first pick on offense. Adafi Away was the second pick on defense. There is a culture here. Addressing both sides of the ball is not something the Ravens are known for. The Ravens keep this up. They will have a very talented, balanced team moving forward. The channel is great, bro. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. Appreciate it, man. That is one thing. But initially, when you start, when you started this, when I first started reading it, I thought you were going uh, in a different direction because I thought you were going to go 2019. Uh, how, I thought you were going to talk about how he doubles down with how in 2019, he picked Hollywood in the first round. He said, um, let's get another receiver. Then he picked Miles Boykin. Then I thought you were going to talk about with Patrick Queen. He picked Patrick Queen in the first round. And he's like, oh, let's get another linebacker, Malik Harrison. And then I thought you were going to talk about 2021, how he picked Rashad Bateman in the first round. Then he went, oh, let's get another one and got Tylen Wallace. And then how he picked the fair way outside linebacker in the first round. And then he went, oh, fifth round, Daylon Hayes. Shout out to Graven.